Well, hello C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here, and today I'd like to just talk about constructors that can appear in a C++ class. So let me just bring up uh, this little uh, stub that I've created where I'm including, where I'm going to include the I.O. stream that's in the STD namespace, a bare bones class called A with just about nothing in it, although it has a size, as we'll see, one byte. And it gets some default functions that we won't talk about too much here. We'll talk about, about that in another video called Silence is Not Always Golden. But I just want to talk about constructors here and in instantiate, instantiating classes. And here, I'm going to create an instance of class A called A. I hope that doesn't look too weird to you. So for example, if I want to declare a variable x of type int, I'll say the type int followed by the variable name x. In this case, the type is big A, because when you declare a class, you're creating a user-defined type, and the variable name is little a. So it's analogous. So when I declare an integer called x, I say int x. So it's type followed by a variable name. Here it's user-defined type, excuse me, variable name a. OK, so let's compile it. I've got a make file. Let me just show you the make file real quick. I'm going to use Clang as my compiler. I want all the warnings you can give me. Give me all the warnings, warnings, Scott Myers warnings, extra warnings, pedantic warnings, and no optimizations, OK? And I can make clean. I'll talk about make files as a separate topic. So let me make this. Oh, it's telling me I'm not using x and I'm not using a. Well, we don't really need x. And I'm not using this variable a, but I'll suffer that. So I make it. I run it. And let's do a val grind on it, and we shouldn't have any leaks. No leaks, OK? Nothing nothing there. Let's uh, do this. Let's say uh, a star x. And so what have we just done? Well, here we create an instance of big A called little a. Here we create a variable x that can point to big A. But we didn't instantiate A here. So really, all we've done is we've created an, an object little a of type big A. And we've created a variable that could point to an object of type A, but does not. However, what I can do is I can say x equals new A. Oops, let's just put one. OK. And now let's see what we've got. OK, so we've got, now we've got two big A's. One on the stack and one on the heap. And the problem is that when I do a new, I got to do a delete. So let me get out of here for a minute. Let me say get out. Let me make it. So I'll type make. Warning, unused variable x. I haven't used either of these variables. We can use them later. And let's run it. No problem. Let's run val grind. And we see we have one byte lost. OK, definitely lost. Why? Because if I knew it, I got to delete it. Now, this is kind of dumb, I guess. Uh, guess but uh, now I'll make it. Uh, now I'll val grind it. And you'll see that there are no bytes lost. OK, so I guess what I'm talking about here is how you instantiate a class. One way is to instantiate A on the stack. And when you instantiate it on the stack, the, story, the, the instance is automatically created and automatically deleted. I hope to show you that in a minute. And here, I have to manually create this instance of A that x points to using my new. And if I knew it, I got to delete it. If the programmer makes it, he, he has to get rid of it. Here, the compiler makes it for me on the stack. OK, so let's not talk about this too much. Let's talk about constructors. OK, how many constructors are there? Well, there are three different kinds of constructors. Let me just show you that I'm going to have a public section and a private section. And in here, I'll have an int uh, n. OK, and now I want to have some constructors. I'll have a default constructor. OK, and in my default constructor, um, I'm sorry, I'll give a the value 0. And then I'll have a uh, conversion constructor. Oh, let me call this number just so this is OK. And now I'll do that here, and I'll do that uh, here. And here I want to give number the value n. And then I want to make a copy constructor. So const a ampersand 
a and number gets a dot number. Okay, there are the three kinds of constructors. Default constructor takes no parameters. It gives, it, it gives all the data attributes default values, something reasonable like zero. Here I have a conversion constructor which converts this number n into an a, and here I have a const copy constructor that, that makes a copy of a, uh, a's values and sticks it in whatever I want. Okay, so how do I call these guys? Well, I'm going to say this one's going to call the default constructor. Um, this one is going to call the conversion constructor. And this one's going to call the copy. So this is default convert copy. All right, let me just show you. How do we know that's going to happen? Well, we'll have to do this. STD colon 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 C out. Default. I got to get this right. And this will be, uh, let me do it again. I just don't want to type. So this one will be copy. And this one will be convert. I want you to see that they get called. So what's my output going to be? And my output is going to be default convert copy. Okay, so let's make it. Let's run it. Default convert copy. So there we have it. So what have we got? Three kinds of constructors. Here I'm going to call them. I'm going to call this a different way. Okay. What do I have now? I've changed this. This is still default. Default because I'm not passing any parameters. This is conversion. Okay, B, I'm going to use the conversion constructor. I'm going to convert this 7 into an A. All right? Here, this is the copy constructor. If you're thinking this is an assignment operator, forget it. Not even close. Get that out of your head. You are dead wrong. This is going to be a copy constructor. How do I know? Because my output's going to be default convert copy. Let's try it. I'll make it. I'll run it. There it is. Default convert copy. So those are the three constructors. Default convert copy. And this video is really about constructors. How do I make these guys? All three of these are on the stack. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, let's overload an output operator. We're kind of bored, aren't we? So let's put a, an int get number. It's a const function. Return number. Okay, and now I could actually print one of these guys and get something interesting. I could say std colon colon c out c dot get number std colon colon endl. Okay, so let me go ahead, compile it, run it, and we get default convert, copy, and then the 7. Okay, so let's bring this back. But who wants to do that? That's kind of boring. Let's overload the output operator. So do you think I can do it? Let's try std colon colon o stream ampersand operator less than less than std colon colon o stream ampersand out and we want to pass our const a ampersand a and we simply want to return out uh, let's see we want to say out less than less than a dot get number and we've got to return that oh, I'm not doing too well here and there we go okay so now what have I just done nothing yet but I've done this I can do that okay so I'm gonna see out let me just go ahead and show you that this works. Let me get out of here and make it, run it. There we go. And how does it work? Okay, so what have I done? I've fixed this. I've overloaded output. So what do you mean by overloading output? Well, I'm going to supply to this. This is, okay, the name of this function is less than, less than. That's what I'm using right here, less than, less than. But I've got to announce to the C++ compiler that this right here is an operator. It's not, you know, I don't want to, it's not a template declaration, and it's not a bit manipulation. It's, it's an operator less than, less than, which means the O stream, the output operator. I'm going to return an O stream so that I can, you know, 
push all of these things into the less than less than. So I'm going to stick that in there and stick that into the. So I'm going to put a an ENDL, which is the new line, into the output stream. I'm going to put C. Uh, I'm sorry, A, this instance of A into the output stream, and I'm going to use C out. Okay, and what do I do up here? Well, I could supply any O stream like a file output, and I want to, and this, here's the signature. It looks funny, doesn't it? Let's rewrite this. Can I rewrite this? Let's rewrite it like this. STD, can I do this? Oh, what am I playing around? C out. Wait, I want to say, let's see, can I do this? Uh, operator less than, less than. Am I screwing up here? I'm probably screwing up. How do I do this? I want to show you. So what I'm trying to show you is this is kind of like, uh, let me rewrite this. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Here's what I'm trying to do. I want to show you that, um, what am I doing here? What I'm doing is this. I want to call this operator less than, less than, and I want to pass C out, and I want to pass C. Does that make any sense there? Does that make any sense at all? Okay, now what am I doing to myself? Let's come over here and see if this even compiles. No way, it does compile. Let's run it, and it works. How can that be? Let me make sure. I'm gonna make clean. Okay, do an LS, show you nothing's there. I'm gonna make it, it does work. How can that possibly work? Okay, let me match this to that. Okay, the name of this function is operator less than and less than. How do I call a function? I use its name. What parameters does it take? Well, it takes an output stream, any output stream. I'm gonna pass it C out because C out is an output stream. And then it takes an instance of A by const reference. My instance of A is that one right here that I created with the copy constructor. Pretty cool, huh? But nobody wants to write it like that. That's no way to write it. So we, the C++ provides some syntactic sugar, so I can say uh, that. Okay, and that does the same thing. Okay, so that does the same thing. Let me prove it to you. I compile it, I run it, same deal. However, I want to string these things together so I can say, yeah, and now put an ENDL at the end. Okay, so this is, uh, how does this, oh, wait a minute, wait, that's no good. Let's, I mean, it would have worked, but let's not do that. Okay, is this left associative or right associative? I think it's right, left associative. So into the output stream, we first put C, which calls this function and gives us the number, and then we put the new line in there. Let me compile this run it. I don't know. I hope this helps. What I wanted to talk about is constructors. There's three of them, and I wrote an overloaded output operator just for good luck. Brian Malloy, happy programming to all of you, over and out.